Hi, I'm Robert Madel and I'm managing the SAP partner business for Cisco. Hi, I'm Andy Fleck and I run application performance management within Atos. So Andy, tell me a little bit about your role at Atos. So we have um, a central application performance management practice that I work in um, that delivers managed services to the other parts within Atos, whether they're business lines or actual large customers. So Andy, I've, I've had the pleasure to see your full stack observability demo here at Sapphire. Can you tell me a bit more what exactly you've been doing there? Yeah, sure. So um, we've created an end-to-end -end demonstration capability. So we've placed both SAP ECC and S4 into Azure, um, and we've surrounded that system with our APM tooling, effectively, which is made up of Cisco App Dynamics. Um, Cisco Thousand Eyes and Iwo, um, and those are all fed and monitored on both of those systems. We also then take transactions and we pump those transactions through both of those SAP systems to actually simulate real usage of SAP. And then we allow our customers to actually see the end-to-end -end business process performance, um, to spot anomalies in that business process performance and actually drill down to either the line of code and that line of code can be SAP, ABAP, um, but equally it can be any of the other end-to-end non-SAP systems as well. Um, also allows us to drill down to the infrastructure, whether that's within on-prem, obviously we run a lot of SAP systems in our own data centers, in the public cloud or actually hybrid across the two. Um, and the final solution um, within that demo environment is Thousand Eyes. So we use Thousand Eyes to understand whether there's a latency in the network um, if there is a problem in the network, where is it? Is it within the customer's network in which so the customer can actually sort that issue out themselves? If it's not there, is it in the ISP? Um, if it's not in the ISP, is it in the public cloud? Um, and that also gives us an ability to monitor SaaS-based applications. So within SAP, you're thinking about things like Concur and success factors, but equally because we do the full end-to-end -end business process monitoring, that could be any SaaS-based solution, including service now or Oracle CRM or whatever. I also saw a pre-post migration dashboard in the demo. Can you, can you explain that a bit? Yeah, sure. So I guess there's a number of use cases that we take our customers and prospects through on that demonstration platform. So the first use case is around assessment. So we use the technology to assess the pre-migrated solution. So what's there now? So typically that would be ECC for our customers. So we use the technology to understand and surface not only the application server landscape end to end, but also the data flowing between that. Um, and by actually analyzing and tracking and tracing those transactions, we then have an ability to build a real time business process dashboard, um, showing not only the overall timing of the business process, but also the volumetrics. So how many orders are we, uh, are we processing? How many invoices are we processing? What's the value of those orders and invoices? And then we have an ability there to actually trigger anomalies. So if we expect to see maybe $50,000 worth of invoicing and we're only seeing 30,000, then we can make a trigger to actually trigger into ServiceNow, for instance, to raise an incident. Um, and then the tool really comes alive because it then allows us to pinpoint where that problem is, um, down to the line of code, down to the infrastructure or down to the network. Um, so that's all pre-migration and transformation. We then use the tooling during transformation to actually spot bottlenecks and find those bottlenecks. And then finally, once we've transferred and transformed for the customer, then we have an ability to rerun the original baseline for performance before the transformation with the transformed performance. And that allows the customer to see empirically that there is hopefully um, an increase in performance. Um, and that is a really useful kind of before and after picture for customers to be able to embrace. So it really allows you to measure success. Yeah, absolutely. What you're doing. That's impressive. I also know that Atos is organized in, in verticals, right? And I assume that you've brought some of your industry knowledge into that solution as well. Yeah, we have. So we're organized into six verticals um, and we've taken the technology. We've worked with both our SAP practice, but also within our key verticals 
to take that messaging and make it appropriate for the particular vertical. So the first one we did with SAP was manufacturing, mainly because that was one of the largest uh, industries that have embraced the technology. So we kind of produce not only marketing uh, messaging uh, to talk to our customers in their language, but also pre-built dashboards specifically for those market segments. And we'll continue to expand that as we grow. That is impressive. And now if, what are the flavors a customer can consume that? As your service-oriented company, I would assume that you've built a, a set of services on top of that offering. Yeah, we have. So we have a managed service that we've built, um, which allows us to basically deliver those services to existing and new Atos um, customers. It also gives um, a value to a customer in just consuming the value of our services rather than having to procure licenses, do their own integrations. So within the managed service, it comes with um, kind of blueprints of where we've done those integrations before. Um, equally, from a customer perspective, pretty much all we do is available on any of the hyperscalers um, marketplaces. So that really allows the customer to be able to consume them in the same way as, I guess, buying a book. So if a customer already is on a cloud journey, decided for his favorite cloud vendor, you know, he can procure all the services he'll need for his SAP journey right with the same cloud vendor as he listed them there. And, but I assume if, if a customer decides to migrate to a cloud, it will not only be SAP services and uh, that he'll migrate. Um, so probably uh, the, the same offerings are available for any kind of workload that you support. Yeah, absolutely. So, so SAP was the key one for us to start with because there's a compelling event that customers are moving through to S4 but actually the managed service that we have is horizontal. So any cloud transformation, any application transformation is, is equally as appropriate. Thank you for being here with me. No, thank you. <laughs>